off with stuff, and I haven't worked since 2020. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm retired now, so. Hmm. And you live in Colorado? No. No, uh, Illinois. I'm uh, about three, Illinois. four, four-hour drive from Chicago. I live at the uh, very end of Illinois. It's oh, okay. In you know country town where they farm a lot okay yeah i've been to chicago and had the snow higher than me <laughs> so. yeah, it's turning it's turning cool now where I, we haven't had a bad winter here in a long time and I, I say every year we're gonna have one but it hasn't but one of these days it's gonna hit <laughs> yeah i remember in my youth growing up all the way up when the uh, through the 60s and 70s Mm. We'd have snow by October. It would be cold. You'd have to put jackets on, and then uh, we'd have I don't know how much snow all winter, but it kind of faded out in the late eighties. I guess yes. the climate. Yeah. I remember we, like I said, we'd miss school every year. For, and we'd have to make it up in the summer because we missed so many days back when I was growing up. Yeah, because of the snowy snow. <laughs> yeah. The worst we ever had was an ice storm. I can't remember what year it was in the, I'm going to say 2006 to 2008, maybe. And we didn't have power for over a week. Our electric lines was down, and I have never seen that in my lifetime, and I hope we never have that again. Mm. Thank God you're not in this part of the world because we are used to power cuts and power outages <laughs> now and then. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I didn't think I was that hooked on TV and stuff, but when you haven't got electricity, you, you got to yeah. get a book to read again. That, that's what I did when I was young, but I can't remember what I read anymore. That's how bad my memory's gone. Concentration, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to hold you up with this personal conversation going here. Would you want to start, Prasanna? Yes, uh, let us begin with a small uh, Chinmaya prayer, I think. You know. uh, nice. Welcome to the poetry reading, my dear friends, my dear friends. Uh, we have been at this. Happy Diwali and uh, let's celebrate poetry with your, you know. Beautiful place to live. Let us uh, try to show you. Is Gargi the moderator today? Not today, ma'am. Okay. Hmm. You can call me Jaya Gargi. Though okay. I'm much. Probably much older than your mom, too. Yeah. I'll call you mom, ma'am, because I don't, I feel, you know, you're not your... comfortable. Okay. Yeah. What's happening? We've lost the screen. I think he's sharing something. Huh. Yeah. Oh, the prayer.
There is no volume. Can't listen to anything. Let's expect um, powerful sessions that has helped to bring into the world by so that was peace poem by Chinmaya Mission. Uh, the condition that has been we are witnessing, you know, we are celebrating Diwali and the lights of uh, uh, festival of lights. Yet, the illumination is missing somewhere. So we wish for the illumination of hearts and minds, you know, all across the world. With this, let us begin with our, you know, uh, poetry reading session with none other than a senior uh, member, I mean, like, She's a well-known uh, writer and a bureaucrat, I would say. Say, retired bureaucrat and as a very well-known uh, figure. Please welcome Jaya Karyani Raman. Thank you. Uh, actually, I haven't written a poem for the day, but I wanted to speak about 
yesterday, the 11th of November, which was Armistice Day. How many of you know what that is? That was the 11th day in the 11th month at the 11th hour in the year uh, 1918, when the countries that, the nations that were at war decided to put an end to war. But so many people we had lost at that time and Armistice Day is a Remembrance Day. Now these various nations who had um, signed this agreement to put an end to war, I'm going to sing a song based on that agreement, okay? Last night I had the strangest dream I've ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed I saw a mighty room, the room was full of men, and the paper they were signing said they'd never fight again. And when the paper was all signed and a million copies made, they all joined hands and bowed their heads and grateful prayers were prayed. And the people in the streets below were dancing round and round. And swords and guns and uniforms were scattered on the ground. Last night I had the strangest dream I've ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. Yeah. Very relevant, very timely, very contemporary, and at all times it is very, very essential. And, and thanks for bringing out this poem, and thanks for you know uh, reminding us this Armistice Day. And this is very much, uh, you know, that is what through this medium we are talking about uh, the peace and the celebration of light mm -hmm. through the hearts. Uh, and, uh, Thank you, man. That is something so beautiful. If you have second one, or if you wanted to go, you know, maybe another one, you could go ahead. Uh, or otherwise, you could take you know, uh, you know, second round. You can come back. Yeah, right. Uh, if time permits. Yeah. And uh, we can listen to the others. Yes. How about the Squibs? Squibs has joined us first time. Maybe his uh, t the turn up is very low, but the uh, turnout is something <laughs> very number is low. But Squibs, are you going to read? Are you going to uh, be a kind of audience? I well, th thank you. So I uh, may I have ten minutes. Yeah. Or reading if somebody would like to go before me oh yeah Thank you. oh yeah 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 sure 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 yeah. okay scripts uh thanks for joining yeah uh, ronnie uh up next ronnie okay let me go to it i'll be back in a flash <laughs> okay can you still hear me yes Okay, hold on. I'm trying to dig behind up here. Let's see here. Okay, I wrote this, I think, a week ago. Uh, it's called In Vapors of Expanding Caverns. And it goes like this. 
in the whispering shadows, tasting the stillness of breath, heaving sighs and blue emotions, crossing the hollowness of pale highways to break the silence of sound, move over to shrouded undertakers, misunderstood in chaotic distortion as they bury the dead in mind games and listen to the stutters in the wind. In darkness, wings are hovering, vapors so soft and sweet, breathing and blending in desecrated scenes. A desperado melting with the desert, lost souls in hallowed delight, twinkling beneath the night. Empty vaults of cavernous minds, so vacant to grim gories, thinking pools in silence and solace. All is as was, will always be staring through these shifting shafts upon, upon parchments with words left unfinished. Empty wells of thought pertained. The soliloquy is in the souls and the taste is left sour in vapors of expanding caverns. Here's a song, swan song sing her dying song. Or here, here's a swan sing her dying song. In the distance, her cries fill the still air as Pan dreams beneath darkened pines as his lute lies mute. Preludes of sages, philosophers and plowmen, mind men that is one. Lastly is the dance, for the time rap of rapture is awoken. In open minds and open hearts, holy men spits upon the world a glimmering like Judy Jesus. Drifting with the moods, endless spells, and velvet light. It's not too late to wait at the gate. The angels are all for optics anyway. It's all just a gas. It's just so wild anymore. Ebbing so near, yet so far. Heaven's waiting only for fortunate souls. Listen close. Tongues of fire left to desire. Heaven's falling apart. Angels with twisted wings drift away in wind streams, unending, ever bending, twisting with the wind. Brain cells always spinning, never ending, light cascading, flow down like a kiss, descending on a descending of whisper is burning. At the gate, turned away, no more fools left here anyway, tasting the sky on fire, smiling, flying crying, dying, look down on fate in vapors of expanding caverns, leave flesh to the dust, immortality is devoured, all remains but a stain, all is optical anyway, the mind slips on, melting. Wonderful. Heavens are falling apart, indeed, and we should break the silence, break the sound, and break the sounds, you know. So very uh, profound, I would say. Beautiful, Rani. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Come back to you, and please give a round of applause to Rani. Get well soon, Rani. Please quit smoking. It doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't I'll, help. Go <laughs> slowly try. <laughs> Thank you. Squibs, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, since Squibs, uh, maybe, uh, uh, yeah. Hello? Yes. Yes, um, uh, I could do a couple poems. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, please, if you could just uh, turn on your camera so that, you know, we just have your beautiful, you know, uh, like, like, <laughs> I, I, please turn on your uh, uh, video and so that we could just you know, everybody my, feel happy about you know looking sure, at you. Um, sure, it's just my pieces are on my on the device for which I'm on Zoom, so my camera will probably. Yeah. <laughs> sure, oh, sure. That's me. And yes. Hey. Uh, quit smoking. <laughs> Trying to as well. Um, so I have two pieces, and I, I thought I'd read them for uh, for Jaya, who uh, did a song about war. I 
I've written an older piece and I've written one recently as well. So for my older piece, um, I call it Changing Station. I wrote it while stuck in traffic listening to the radio. Okay. 89.2. An animal that was there all along is recently discovered. Recognized for behavior now considered odd. A lizard sheds its skin to avoid predators. 101.98. So what constitutes a mass? The accumulation or the loss? We continue to find faults of our own in order to forgive the faults of others and their own. Justice is when everyone is a victim. To dilute the issue, to divide the tissue, is the diplomacy a broken line speaks in equal measure. 92.16. The children of immigrants dust off their melanin when it trends. Pain fabricated as public art, as an act of instigating peace, as if war were not reason enough. The wound is not lost, though the skin changes. Predators and victims and recently discovered animals share station on the radio as wheels spinning in traffic. Thank you. Is that one? Yes, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And for my second one, I call, uh, I don't know if I could find it here. Uh, my second piece I call Cannibal. One moment. It's right here. <laughs> Someone set off the oxygen. Now all the apes are running wild, fucking each other and praying to the firmament. See, they figured out how to dance by making atmospheric pressure do the same and found language to sharpen teeth and aimed for the heart. They ran out of oceans to eat and accused the earth of being round. So many miles for just two feet, too far to kick a ball home with wheels to flirt the horizon. Give them mountains to choke and pebbles in their shoes, lest they invent God and believe he is on their side. Give them poison, give them magic, give them money so they never grow up. Make them confuse a lectern for a podium. Tell them where to stand. Stand in line. You want some more? But there is no one the fire won't burn, regardless who started it. We all cook the same. It's just a difference in taste. In a world of cannibals, each greeting is a hostage negotiation until someone turns the oxygen off. Or until the day the apes teach each other how to breathe again. Thank you. Pieces. Wow. Both pieces were profound, as always. One is peace, one is very, I mean, very touching and very Ooh, the look, uh, look kind of, you know, protest kind of. So, so beautiful. Uh, where, where would it, I mean, start? Uh, could you sh share your, uh, you know, social network handles? You know, could able to find oh. you something like that, even the chat box. You know, I will. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and thank you for joining. And please keep joining. I know <laughs> it's today's festival, so no, nobody has joined today. It will be enjoyous. So thank you, Chris. Chris. Please give a round of applause. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Up next is yes, our doctor. Please welcome our regular. And very um, make uh, make call the mainstay of the fat and brains, and it's very um, I mean just, uh, never misses writing prompts or whatever you know. Uh, it's just, so please welcome Doctor Gargish Saha. Good evening, all. Would like to wish you all a very happy Diwali. May this festival of lights bring happiness and joy and endless blessings in all our lives. Happy Diwali. Thank you, Prasanna, sir, for giving me space in this wonderful platform today. Here goes my poem. The Festival of Lights. Diwali, the Festival of Lights. The houses are decorated with, with tiny lamps, which appear quite bright. The happiest festival of the Hindus is Diwali. It is also called by the name Deepavali. 
the on November. It is widely celebrated great show, pomp, and grandeur. The houses are decorated with festoons, buntings, paper lanterns, and floral ornamentation, which highlight gaiety, brightness, merriment, and compassion. Diwali is the festival of crackers and lamps. Even the poorest hut has a small lamp, which open up the stars of hope in the dark. The festival of victory, success, triumph, and hope in despair does leave a mark. Every one of the five Diwali days has its own religious significance, which people duly fulfill with utmost diligence. Dantiras is the first day. The next day, the evil demon, Nakasura, was by Lord Sri Krishna's slate. The third day is the Diwali day. It is for the business year of the Hindus, the closing day. Fourth comes the crowning glory, the New Year day. People are dressed in their best, and are joyous and gay. The last day of the festival is called Bhai Duj, when the brother expresses his love for his sister. Diwali is the most glamorous and enjoyable festival. What Xmas is to the Christians, so is Diwali to the Hindus. Thank you. That was the first one. May I go to the second one? Here's the second one, the lotus. In the brown mucky waters blossoms a beautiful pink lotus, untouched, unmoved by the stark realities of life, swimming in a pool of boundless quietude. It symbolizes beauty, fertility, prosperity, and spirituality, also highlighting resilience, rebirth, knowledge, and purity. Itself remains in the waters in the world without the world entering into it. Let us also remain in the world like an active spectator, still being detached, a part of the whole, yet perhaps no one, nothing. Let me make my life like a lotus, happily rejoicing amidst a shore of worries and woes, pure of actions without any expectations. Let us bring a little happiness in the world's vast store by blooming like a lotus, silently with solemn dignity. Thank you. Beautiful uh, rendition, ma'am. Beautiful recitation. First was, uh, you know, uh, express. I mean, you narrated the significance and uh, background of the festival Dipavali, and the second one is beautiful. Thank you, thank you for coming, and thank you for showing this. You know, the kind of consistency and the kind of honor. And the kind of, thank you, thank you so much. Sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, that was the Gargisa. Please, uh, please give a round of applause, my dear friends. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is yes, uh, she is from Bangalore. She is a retired teacher. Is well, very well known. I mean, it's like a uh, beautiful poet. Uh, please welcome Hira Nawaz. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. I'm audible. Okay. One minute. First of all, good evening, everybody. Happy Diwali to everybody. And as you can see in my place, lots of firecrackers are going out. Uh, I hope it won't disturb anyone when I read my two poems. The first poem I'm going to read is Kindness. One of the most beautiful qualities imbued with humanism is the quality of being kind. For this shows us one's innate greatness and magnanimousness of one's heart, soul, and mind. It is a characteristic that is greater than physical beauty or completing an intellectual thesis in time. For an overflowing heart of kindness wins hands down with no misplaced reason or rhyme. Kind people show great sensitivity, empathy, and warmth to their fellow human beings and the indigent soul. It is a one trait that separates the wicked like Hitler and Mussolini from those who are nice 
and whole. Kind people give care, kind and their time to charity to the underprivileged women, children, women and men. Beauty queens and actresses have shown compassion, which includes our very own Ashwarya Rai and Shishmita Sen. But the greatest proponent of kindness is the late Mother Teresa, who was a true adherent to the God above, who led by example, showing a compassion to the dying and destitute with an untainted, undying love. She believes, believed in Jesus Christ who had said, as you did it to the least of these brethren, you did it to me, opening up the missionaries of charity to the world of kindness, which is bigger and deeper than the sea. And that is truly the sense of the unhypocritical religion. For it is truly said that hands that help are better than lips that pray, proving without a doubt that kindness magnetically draws us closer to God. For where there's a will, there's a burgeoning highway. So that's the first poem. I'll go to my second poem now. My second poem was actually, um, it was written for a group called, I hope this helps, uh, where they try to uh, spread, uh, an, um, you know, a spread kind of understanding and uh, enlightenment on the whole com concept of health. So I wrote it for that. It's called, it's, I, in this poem, I write about what I do early in the morning when I get up and which many people do, and that's going for a fast walk. Some people go rock, uh, running, jogging. Some people go skating. Some people do their exercises. But for me, uh, walk, fast walking works for me. So this poem is all about that and how it helps our health. For maintaining one's holistic health, rise and shine and give God the glory. Listen, my dear friends, as I take you on my everyday morning constitutional story. With my hand on my well-meaning heart, I say to you all, I hope this poem helps. As the dawn breaks into the morning, the birds chirp vociferously and the dog yelps. I take my morning healthy walk around a nearby lake surrounded by surreal trees. A blustery morning as I walk boisterously fast and every moment do I seize. The lake has been refurbished and replenished by the onslaught of the southwest monsoon bringing rain. Every caregiver will aver that fast walking produces feel-good endorphins that reduce pain. Trees give out oxygen, which we take in, reduce soil erosion, and produce healthy fruit. It's nature's beautiful gift to mankind that naturally induces well-being that no enemy can loot. The lake and trees produce a cool, balmy, and bracing breeze that we just love. And for this, we have to effusively thank our omnipresent, all-knowing, and benevolent God above. After my iota of walk, I sit on a park bench and like many others meditate, say my morning positive morning affirmations and earnestly pray. 
to lead a meaningful life to all around, to confess my sins and to keep health challenges at bay. To all my warriors out there, I hope this poem inspires you to mitigate deleterious habits, but it gives you a lift that God has given you this one life and wants you to revel and rejoice in it. Yes, life is a precious gift. One minute. One minute. I just have another two lines to complete then. And remember, now these are the last two lines. I hope this is a turning point of the poem. And um, it really shows the message and the final me whole meaning of this poem. And remember, no matter what naysayers say, pray, do physical activity, and never give up, but give it all you've got. For the universe has given you a mortal human body and soul denied to many, and going by the spiritual benchmark, that's a law. Thank you so much. So beautiful, man. So beautiful. That was Hira Nawaz with her voice. Please give a round of applause, my dear friends. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Prasanna Ji. Thank you, ma'am. Up next is definitely our smart boy from Bangladesh. Please welcome Razawadin Stalin. Thank you, Kumar Prasanna. Happy Diwali to everybody. Uh, I want to read two poems, one Bangla, this is my language, and another English. The first, I want to decide Bangla. Uh, the title of the poem, Proti Vidda. Ami kono prashikhak noi, je shikha dekhabe likhte hoi kovita. पृथ्वीर कोन कोबी पृथ्वीर कोन कोबी लिखते शिक्षण निकाउ के और बोते रुच्चोता एक ही भावे विश्वत होते हैं नदीर कॉल्लोल की भावे सुनते हैं तब उस तेकाउ के विद्यालय जेते हैं पृथ्वीर प्रतिटी मास चैनल बुझे ब्रोजन दास प्रतिटी पाखी बिखरत बौईमानी तादर कोनो ग्रुप भी होनी भूमिष्ठ शिशु के क्यों बोले दाय ना कि भावे कांपते होंगे और भालोबाशार कृतकोशल शिक्ते जेते होए ना कुस्ती के रेर काट से और पृथ्वी के सब महत्तम मानुष के रचले निरक्षो नाउ आई वांट टू रिसेक्ट माय पोइम इन इंग्लिश दैट टाइटल ऑफ़ द पोइम ऑफ़ द a stove is blazing without any fire. A pot is boiling, not emanating any steam. A stone-free barricade is standing sky high. And a war without any soldier. Burnt out landscape. Ornament, ornamented Glamour, totally closed. Ornamented, glamour, totally closed. A periscopic view of destroyed horizon. The forbidden numerals, including zero, are counting themselves, leaning against the clever. Thanks, everybody. Brilliant, sir. Brilliant. Oh, really. I like the way your Bengali rendition. I like the sweetness Thank of Bengali language in general. Because our languages are sweet, you cannot tell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> take the side of this particular language, but all are sweet. 
you know you can send me uh, your one english poem to my messenger and i will publish again okay <laughs> yeah thank you thank you thank you that was so lovely about you uh, that was reza reza udin star and my dear friends please give a round of applause uh, next up is yes uh, our uh, regular participant please welcome priyanka niyogi uh, priyanka niyogi please uh, turn on your mic yes please go ahead. i can read just only one poem happy deepavali to all of you copy tar na kali ar kolumi priyanka niyogi কালির আলো চিহ্ন রাখে দিক দিগন্ত উঠে আসে নানা তথ্য তাতে পাওয়া যায় জীবন বাঁচানো ও সমাজ পরিবর্তনের পথ্য সহজ হয় প্রতিবাদের ভাষা জাগ্রত হয় বিবেক সঠিক দিশা পায় আবেগ ইতিহাস জাগে সারিতে নানা বিষয় থাকে বিষয় দিতে রসে রকমারি থাকে এক একজনের এক এক রকম কাহিনী কালির শব্দ সারি বাড়িয়ে দেয় কালির ব্যবহারকারী নবজাগরণের প্রস্তুতি থাকে আশার কিরণ জাগিয়ে তোলে তেজস্ক্রিয় চেতনার উন্মেষ ঘটায় থ্যাংক ইউ একচুয়ালি মাই আই গোয়িং টু ফেভার সো Uh, I want to leave. Sorry? Actually, my tablet is not good. So, I want to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please share. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was uh, Priyanka Niyogi. Please give a round of applause, my dear friends. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Up next is, yes, uh, Dominic Windrum. Please welcome our subtle and silent poet. Please welcome. Uh, who writes a sublime short verses. Thank you. <coughs> nice to be here again. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to do a poem called about my previous experience on the poetry scene in Hartlepool. <laughs> I've stopped it as well. <clears throat> it's called The Northeast Poetry Scene. When I was younger, I performed my poetry at local venues right across the bleak northeast of England. Oh, it was much like pulling teeth. And I never did fit in with that mad scene. To my primed and well-trained eyes, it was indeed more like bad pantomime than real poetry. It was marred by shameless self-publicity. Many poets were full of sound and fury, but so few could convey meaning, seemingly. Many were merely painted skeletons and clearly lacked substance. They couldn't understand The crude style without content was such a crime. They seemed happy in their misty realm of lies. Many couldn't conceive a key simile or cunning metaphor for love, not money. Many couldn't manage to spot a truly novel notion, even if it hit them right between their eyes. Yet there were a few I liked who didn't compromise their art and dreams to play a stupid part in a stupid scene. All we poets who have glimpsed the greater light must quiet and fake roaring centres of life. We should suspend time like a mod shaman and concentrate fully on jeweled moments that enchant and intrigue as they expand our consciousness. Therein lies true healing power. And as a counterpoint to that, I'd like to read a poem by Dylan Thomas uh, called In My Craft or Sullen Art, and it's from 1946. In my craft or sullen art, exercised in the still night, when only the moon rages and the lovers lie abed with all their griefs in their arms, I labour by singing light, not for ambition or bread, or the strut and trade of charms on the ivory stages, but for the common wages of their most secret heart. Not for the proud man apart from the raging moon I write on these spin drift pages, nor for the towering dead with their nightingales and psalms 
but for the lovers, their arms round the griefs of the ages, who pay no praise or wages, nor heed my craft or art. Thank you. That was Dominic with his beautiful two few poems. Thank you, Dominic. Thanks for your love. Thanks for you know, uh, kind of you know consistency in joining and you know delivering this platform. Thank you. Uh, it's just honor. Uh, please give a round of applause to Dominic. Please. Uh, up next is yes, of course, uh, Renu Kuntla Murali. Please welcome her folk artist, her teacher, a songwriter, whatnot. He writes in Telugu, English, and you know he sings so beautifully. Please welcome. Uh, so good evening, Murali. all. Sir, please go ahead. Turn on your mic, sir. Turn on your mic. Sir, you are muted. Please turn on your mic. Yes, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, okay. Sir. Again, you are muted. Please turn on your mic. Hello. Yes, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Happy Diwali, sir. Happy All Diwali. the poets. I would like to recite one poem. And that is Happy Diwali, sir. Then if you give me permission, sir, I recite one poem on music, sir. Happy, happy Diwali. Happy, happy Diwali. Happy, happy Diwali. Happy, happy Diwali, may bring you prosperity, may bring you happiness, may bring you prosperity, may bring you happiness. Happy, happy Diwali, happy, happy Diwali, everyone could celebrate, everyone could enjoy everyone could tell about it everyone could enjoy happy happy diwali happy happy diwali may bring you prosperity may bring you happiness Everything will be successful. Everything is joyful. Everything will be successful. Everything is joyful. It will be the life is full of fun. Darkness can be deported. Bright lights are all after. Happy, happy Diwali. Happy, happy Diwali. May bring you prosperity. May bring you happiness. The goddess likes me have prosperity. May give you all the... Now the wealth may Diwali may be as brilliant as you are, may enjoy joyful best of a life, may prosper and light a life, may bring you plenty of love and success, may give you bright and shiny life. Happy, happy Diwali. Happy, happy Diwali. May bring you prosperity. May bring you happiness. May bring you happiness. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Uh, that was, as I said, you know, uh, my dear friends, that was so... A lively and jovial kind, very inspiring. Please give a round of applause to Great Puntlam Murali. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks. joining. So one, sir, so one more, sir, one more. I would like to say, sir, we time, have sir. positive of time, so I think we could just go ahead with <laughs> other points. <laughs> so maybe next week. Okay, let us welcome okay, our next okay, poet. Our next poet is Mulya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pandal. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Mulya Elha. Can hear me. Uh, 
Uh, yes, Mulia, go ahead. Um, actually, I have uh, my own song that I can play any instrument, but it just, yeah, a melody. I hope you can hear it. Yeah. <clears throat> Mulia, you could raise your volume. Ah, uh, okay. How about now? Okay. Kapan kah hutan menghijau lagi? Ku kurangi keganasan alam ini di mana kah? Hutan disambut begini Jangan kau tambah dukaku dengan kamu semakannya Apakah kau tiada memikirkan Tak pedulikah kau dengan penderitaan Kami yang merintih Meronta karena tak kuasa melihat segala keadaan yang ada rasakan udara yang menyesakkan dada. Okay. Thank you. We finished. That's a small, small, very small one. But yes, thank you, thank you, Mulia. Thanks for coming. Yes, up next is yes. Uh, please give a round of applause to Mulia. Yes, Lord. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is yes, brilliant writer. Uh, she is an award-winning poet. Please welcome Laura Gravel. Oh, thank you very much, Asana. Happy Diwali to everyone here and to my neighbor, China, back in England. <laughs> um, I get to follow two beautiful singers. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a rather cheerful um, piece that's called Journey. <clears throat> and it's a bit of a ballad. I named my daughter Journey today as she was born. The contractions came as whales that sang through horns of storm. I named my daughter Journey. The birthquake shook my frame as gales of scorn and glory sang rounds of rough refrain. My journey leaves tomorrow, grown tall and made of iron. Her legs spun long as thorns her feet of brass and morn. My journey treads this world in gold of self-made mold. Her crown is clouds of thought, her heart a peace self-taught. My journey leaves for future a state of mind and change. Her whales will guide her ship, the rain will bless her name. I named my daughter Journey, the day that she was born. She leaves today forever, where death is never Lord. Thank you. And um, see for the second piece. This is a short, one, short one, short one. This is very short, chrysalis. The wild geese have flown south. The cool air has set up house, blowing away the heat of summer, blowing away the fear of fire. Cool yourself in the leaves of fall. Cocoon yourself in the fall of leavings. Wrap yourself in gestation, the folds of uncertainty, the time of trembling. 
rest yourself in rapt concentration while new wings grow. Thank you. Wow. Very subtle. Beautiful reading, I would say. Beautiful, so beautiful. Yes. Thank you for presenting and thanks for coming. Really, your yeah, honor. So beautiful. Thank you for coming. Uh, please give a round of applause to Laura Glav and uh, give, uh, please welcome our next point. Yes, of course, open my contest and uh, be a brilliant uh, this is award winning. Uh, and again, the poet Robert Fleming, please welcome. Robert. Good morning. I'm Robert Fleming, a visual poet from Lewis, Delaware, United States. And I see I can share the screen. Thank you. I'm going to be doing a tribute to uh, Veterans Day and Armistad Day, two poems. Um, this first one, I'm grateful for a mentor that I did a mentorship with in the winter of this year, Manny Blackshur from the Horror Writers Association, he actually gave me line edits um, on this poem, which were very helpful. People who say poppies are evil are evil. Tom's blood's red poppy sap. Ex-service retinas are yellow poppy black stamens. Military hospital bed sheets, dust green pollen, PTSD. Purple poppy petals appetize alkali diners stroke and asphyxiate conscripted to their fatal battlegrounds. At last post is sounded, a flag is folded and stowed. Remember, wear the black bloom on your left breast. Come Armistad Day, a pin from pink blossom. And I'm also going to do um, a tribute to uh, my birth Canada, my birth country, which is Canada. Um, uh, this this uh, poem is written in French. Canada souvient. Le drapeau est rouge comme la santé des premiers 1808 colons d'Acadia et blanche comme le premier florissant fleur de lit. Dans l'automne, les arbres et rabes tombent orange et l'an bois rut. Dans l'hiver, la neige couvre le prairie rose. Dans le printemps, l'arbre et rabe sèvre et les castors laissaient leur loge. Dans l'été juillet 1867, Canada est devenu a nation. And now in English. The Canadian flag is as red as the blood as the first 1608 Arcadia settlers, and white as the first bloomed fleur-de-lis flower. In fall, maple tree leaves fall orange and moose rot. In winter, snow covers the prairie rose. In spring, maple tree saps and beavers leave their lodges. In summer, July 1st, 1867, Canada became a nation. Thank you for letting me do my tribute to Canada and to Armistad Day. Greetings from uh, Lewis, Delaware, in the United States. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for joining. You know, it reminds me of you know, just begin with Ormish test. A poem, a sheet, you know, a song, you know, remembering Ormish test. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. That's powerful. Please give a round of applause, my dear friends. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is, of course, yes, Richard Spisek. Please join, please bring, uh, you know, uh, by his poetry book, 
This is very much his galaxy is reaching out to the galaxies. <laughs> Thank you so much, my brother. Uh, it's always, it's such an honor to be among these fine poets. Uh, we hear so much that is falling short of truth. So when you listen to poets and you hear their heart truth, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, I'm going to read you a piece about literacy. Uh, it's called Literacy Forbidden. Seeing a book, I'm tempted, I'm hearkening back to those days when reading was restricted. Somehow, reading was always under attack somehow. That was a given. Alone for nobles and the wealthy lot, the rest kept back, never got their shot. And as for others, they were just as likely forgot. It's a special privilege to read today, even to learn what you need. Such mean restrictions we never need. Conditions out of season beyond reason. But those who do not take the time to read lay bitter stones on their broken seed to voyage with the mind open, full sail, another realm breaking through another leaky veil. Liberty seized with both hands down from the shelf. Grab a book. Yes, you should, my dear friends. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. That was Richard. Please give a round of my applause, my dear friends. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for joining. Up next, he is, yes, uh, Scott Norman Rosenthal. Please welcome Scott. Norman wasn't uh, hello. Um, I got the time a bit wrong, but let's see here. I don't know if I've read this previously for the group, but I'm going to share screen. The Lost Enchanter recalls honey. In the bouquets of strength, coursing my veins like wine, as I dined in the morning and in the long afternoons in my house with the windows open. Now that the sun is like an old harlot or a false friend too late found out, now, the noises of the morning, the traffic in the street becomes bees buzzing in my dreams. The people in the houses, the lamplit streets are no less alien than I. The whole surface of the earth is foreign and the right nighted roads will not lead me home. I'm going to uh, look for another one here. It's also in the same series of The Lost Enchanter. I don't know if you can see this. Can you? Yes, we can see. Can you see it? Thank yes. you. The Lost Enchanter, oh wait, no, that's the same one. Erg. Um, um, well, I had it for a moment. I know what I did, what I did wrong, but give me one moment. Ah, oh, there it is. There it is. The Lost Enchanter speaks of the moon. It's a place of abundant light and dark. It's a road where the dead folk go. Sometimes the moon speaks to you while you steal corn. Talking of lost loves and other nations, 
The moon has forests of stolen corn. Lovers look into mirrors behind the windows of the moon. Following country roads, the moon is at your shoulder. The moon is a young girl. The moon is an old man, a wizard. The moon chases you after your shadow. And still you are riding to the moon. The moon is a far place, a cold rock. The moon is home. Thank you. The lost enchanter speaks. Brilliant. Brilliant indeed. Thank you. These are very old. And so is the person reading them. Very cool, very poesy, I would say. That was Scott. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for joining. Uh, you could stop sharing the screen. Maybe I think I could. All right. Now, how do I? Yeah, let me. Always get confused about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. There we go. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was lovely reading uh, on a poem. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is, yes, a wonderful human being and yes. a promoter of poetry. Please welcome Saraswati Poshwal. Saraswati Poshwal. Now please unmute your mic. Saraswati Poshwal. Uh, maybe uh, I think I um, uh, could uh, yeah, jump on to our next poet. Let us uh, call upon Maria. Maria is part of the group. Please welcome Maria. Yes, Maria, please. Good evening, everyone. Happy to be back after a long time. Thanks for the invite, Prasanna. Happy Diwali for all. Hope you have prosperity and happiness all days of your life. And uh, my poem is about love. Here it goes. The title of the poem is it's all about love. Love, that little strong thing in our hearts it grows. To contagious healthy disease spread more and more glow. We have nothing to do. It by itself rises in our ink. Persona to persona stroke bury the wretched easily. Love never goes astray. Love never diminishes feelings. Love never dangerous fool. Love that we give turns into love. This is the first one. And uh, the second one it's dedicated to poets. Um, the title is To the Fans of Poets. Are we able to decipher the mind of a poet? It's not an easy task, I must tell to everyone. He's full of thoughts and imagination. Though sometimes we can decipher the read from the start. He works with emotions of him and others ones. He invites us to think deeply. What's the real meaning of words? He uses figurative language to enhance his composition into the best. He, if inspired, lots of alliterations and metaphors. Reading is a vicious, 
that carries us to constant trap spectacle. We don't know when or why we get wrapped up in the reed, though it involves us like an autoptus with its eight tentacles, warming us during a trip that takes the right time to a flight, knowing how to hold our breath, a poet always good play at words. When we read, we immerse in words to inherit emotions plus knowledge. Conscious of that, poet, the master, doesn't save words to cast spell. And we who are affectionate to poetry do not deny hidden pledge for poets. This is the second one. Hope you all enjoy it. Um, if we have time, I can recite another one. May no, I? No, 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 no. <laughs> I am inspired today. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you very you. much. I really love having you around. <laughs> Maria, thanks for coming and thanks for you know, sharing your... Thanks for the invites. Thank you. Yeah, that was Maria. Please welcome our next poet. is a promoter of poetry, Saraswati Poshwa. Please welcome Saraswati Poshwa. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Namaskar. Sasrikada. Firstly, happy Diwali to all of you. My warm wishes to everyone. Stay safe. Happy, happily, prosperity goes to you all. So I'll start with uh, two poem, uh, two king on a small, small one. Uh, this is a translation of the same poem. Hindi mein hai, the title of the poem is Lamhat. Uh, Lamhat. Kuch aisa kar ki har guzarta lamha ek yadgar lamhat ban jaye. Kuch aisa kar ki har guzarta lamha ek yadgar lamhat ban jaye. Kuch is tarah ki zindagi basar kar. कुछ इस तरह की जिंदगी बसर कर तन्हाई में गुनगुना भीड़ में आंखें बंद कर न नम कर या खोल आंखें जश्मना पता नहीं कब जिंदगी दे दगा तो कुछ न कुछ कमा सिवा वफा के साथ ले जाएगा क्या कुछ गिनी चुनी यादें गुजरा वक्त की याद आएगा एक एक पल जो पिरोए थे हंसकर मुस्कुरा कर जितने जीतने जहान आया था सिकंदर महान जीतने जहान आया था सिकंदर महान वो भी खाली हाथ गया मुकर्र है जब मुकर्र है जब हर लम्हा मुकर्र है जब हर लम्हा तेरे मेरे जाने का मुकर्र है जब हर लम्हा तेरे मेरे जाने का फिर किस बात का घमंड न तेरी है न मेरी है फिर किस बात का घमंड न तेरी है न मेरी है बस और बस एक लम्हात की जिंदगी ये अंधेरी है बस एक लम्हात की जिंदगी अंधेरी है मोमेंट्स एवरी स्किपिंग मोमेंट ऑफ लाइफ एवरी स्किपिंग मोमेंट ऑफ लाइफ यू कैन मेक इट मेमोरेबल मोमेंट एवरी स्किपिंग मोमेंट ऑफ लाइफ यू कैन मेक इट मेमोरेबल मोमेंट स्पेंड योर लाइफ बाय सिंगिंग इन द लोनली मोमेंट closing your eyes in the crowd or opening and celebrating in mass spend your life by singing in the lonely moments closing your eyes in the crowd or opening and celebrating in mass life can ditch you at any time life can ditch you at any time you will take the luggage of loyalty and some remarkable memories not more than that life can ditch you at any time you will take the luggage of loyalty and some remarkable memories not more than that flashbacks of reminiscence will glitter your eyes flashbacks of reminiscence will glitter your eyes not the memories in the sitting not the memories in the sting for milestones of life not the memories in the sting for milestones of life alexander came to win the world alexander came to win the world but his hand, hands were empty Alexander came to win the world, but his his hands were empty. Then why we think to convince the whole world and everyone has their own perception of life? 
Alexander came to win the world, but his hands were empty. Then why we think to convince the whole world? Everyone has their own perception of life. When time of everyone is destined, when time of everyone is destined, why we live with ego? Why we live with ego? Life is not about me and you. Life is not about me and you. It's all about the moments you live that. It's all about the moment you live that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kegumar Prasanna ji, for inviting me. Hope all you like my poem. Superb, ma'am. It's all about the moment. It's all about the moment, indeed. It's all about the moment. So beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, please give a round of applause to Saraswati Pushwal, ma'am. Uh, please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is a historian and he's a brilliant poet and he always, you know, uh, such an, I know, a uh, wonderful heart and I could just you know, read out his poems on Gandhiya, peace and all. Please welcome Christopher T. George. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to read some war poems. Um, the um, gentleman that you see here, hopefully you can see this, uh, is Lee Denoya. And um, he wrote this poem that, uh, wait a minute. Okay. I didn't have to go to war like my brothers, my grandfather and dad. I was a fortunate son, born in a fleeting time of peace. Today I'll sit quietly, grateful and grieving for the millions not as lucky as me. I sit against the cenotaph in Portree Town on the Isle of Skye and cry for the absent lads who went away to war and died. Their children's children's kids should be around me now, cheerfully playing games and wondering what their mums will make for tea. Instead, I'm left with faceless names of men who marched away from here but never got to brush away their sparkling daughter's wedding tears. It's inscribed to the glory of God, who we fantasize takes sides, like any father would, Hassad, would choose which child he wants to die. No stone slab memorializes the maimed and forever changed, nor the mums, sweethearts and wives with framed yellow yesterdays, nor the shell-shocked who returned as ghosts to those left behind, shells themselves uninterred in a no-man's land inside their mind. Instead of marble and parades and etchings like the glorious dead, what if monuments portrayed the horrors of war instead? If every name we etch in place could bleed and scream like the dying man, would let us hesitate before we started again. Is glory so worth dying for? Seems like honor's holly folly to me. Can there be a war to end war? Does dark end dark? Can dead boys dream? And this is a statue to uh, poet Wilfred Owen, uh, who was honored for his bravery during the war, but then was killed uh, near the end of the war. Uh, this is in Hamilton Square, uh, Birkenhead, opposite Liverpool. And I'll end with this poem, a wonderful poem by Nick Lovell, Poppy. Poppy doesn't glamorize war because poor Poppy knows the score. Poppy looks after what is left the ruined minds, the souls bereft, the eyes so blind they cannot see, wounds invisible to you and me, the coffins loaded on the plain, the broken never sane again. Poppy hears the family's cries, their shrieks of no, their screams of why. She awaits round to help support, knows their last battle's not been fought, she sits beside them through the night, comforts them when they cry out. She knows their dark holes, hidden tears, fears. 
knows old soldiers cry new tears. For Poppy isn't government. She knows they had no choice, were sent from farmland, town and city street, from gentle peace to battle's heat. They fought for those who never know. War's real cost, blood's scarlet hue. Those lucky souls their innocence brought with the hearts of those who stood and fought. Thank you, everyone. Can I get rid of this? Uh, no, I might need you to do it, Kumar. <laughs> Wonderful, I know. Thank you. Thoughtful. You know, kind of thought provoking, you know, always. Do we have to fight a war to gain the peace? That has to be. <laughs> and the poppy is, yes, very satirical, but yes, very. Sometimes I think I should write, you know, reason and read more of poetry. Uh, more of argument. Thanks, uh, Krishna, for the for being here. It's a kind of turning into this serious kind of thing. So, but that is very much uh, what do you call it? needed, very much needed. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Krishna. Thank you. Uh, next, I think uh, we have uh subedi lok narayan uh, he's joining us for the first time subedi lok narayan maybe he's joining us from nepal uh, subedi sir uh, are you are you reading today or again okay, like audience subedi narayan please turn on your mic uh dear friends Hello. just uh just listening today to me i'm just joining and looking happily to all of you yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, welcome, welcome, and uh, uh, please enjoy the show. We have two poets left, so please welcome uh, Isaac Cohen. Isaac is there, yes, Bizo. Uh, yeah, please, Isaac Cohen. Isaac. Uh, I say this. Uh, okay. Uh, let me uh, uh, share a, uh, share the screen and you know share this wonderful. Uh, so. Love touched me. It was so powerful, my breath became suspended, my heart shed blissful tears. I had not previously experienced this sweetness, and I was taken aback. In my drunken haze, I tried to comprehend this music, mesmerizing the alcove of my being. Alas, it was to no avail for a compelling delight silenced the intellect and calmed my soul. I saw myself emanating rhythms from the majesty of the sun. A pulsating light took hold of my darkness, smashing it into a trillion fragments. I swooned in reverie, intoxicated by the splendor of my eternal home.
how did you like it my dear friends that was by our <laughs> acharya lantern carrier <laughs> now he's gonna present his poem please welcome manati tahachi sanaka lantern carrier you know thank you so much my brother we need this beauty in this world right now diwali festival of lights o row of lights o festival of splendor o flame you who are encircled by starlight and indigo streams of beauty come continue to bless this beautiful realm that you have created your diamond orange hue your deep vast blue fascinates my co with the enchanting power you are the triumph of wisdom over ignorance the luminosity of shooting stars sparkling in the darkness mesmerized by your fiery love i remain riveted and dance with the cherubic joy unknown to humans except within the grandeur of the soul my songbird soars upward soaked in the redolence of fragrant rosebuds all blossoming within while love laughs in ecstasy as my breath withdraws in silence it is only in your effulgent fire that the sound of emptiness becomes meaningful o oh, light my light i would love to engage you in a continuum of love letters a river of symphonies echoing from my soul oh the awakening song a river of memories caught up in the flow away o oh, remorse love has now pervaded my soul lights brilliant sunrise moving in eternal time the cool luminous blaze of heaven is calling me come the stars travel a zillion miles to adorn my smiles with roses assuredly do i march like sunset following dawn the blue moon weeping at my surrender the dark night masking my insanity of longing to see thy face delight my delight come how alive is the merriment of your children face painting henna hand art lantern parades and millions of flares of diwali lamps called dias to light up your cities firecrackers food and gallery embrace the lives as they chant your name with joyful cheers embedded within the gleeful spirit valmiki's honored lord rama's aroma Shri Krishna's sweetest love has enwrapped me in its cute embrace as I dance on his bosom. Your kaleidoscope of terracotta lotus lanterns illuminate my heart in a spectacle of bliss. Come, sweet Shyama, inebriate this being with your self-amorous magnificence. Intoxicate all Indian souls in the diaspora so they drink from the supernal wine of paradise, of Brahman. bless them with inner garlands the opulence of mahalakshmi's heaven so they bathe so they bathe in a supernal joy unknown to humans within the deep profundity and grandeur of the soul phantom carrier thank you amaze you never fail to amaze uh, acharya you never fail to amaze me with your uh, thank you my bhai ji uh, you know thank you bhai sanatanik you know knowledge or we could say scripture and you know, filled with amaya so mahabharata and what our the spiritual readings you know so beautiful so beautiful very nice thank you thank you aryom aryom tatsa thank you that was slender thank you for sharing your piece uh, and uh, uh, please welcome our next poet our next poet is yet another wonderful poet he is he is a great uh, i mean like how he builds up this a community of you know kind of database and you know she has this open mics and all please welcome robert willen robert thank you I've taken a bad fall since I've seen you last and I'm operating with one arm so I apologize. Uh Robert uh, 
can you fix this you know this microscope i mean a mic of yours uh, so that you know, could uh, hear you <laughs> you know, so. Okay, so, so we're all set, I hope. Uh, uh, here, oh, yes. Here they celebrate Veterans Day. It's kind of a um, moral bind and that you don't want war, yet how do you honor those who have served and given so much without honoring war? So uh, this is a poem for them. The sky fell silent. The sky fell silent. The earth stopped shaking. A stench of putrid smoke carried away on the wind. Tourniquets no longer twisting, bleached of blood stains. White bedsheets lofting in the breeze, flying great flags of truth, walls of a village napping in a cradle of orchards. Bridges span different shores, free of the clumping of boots. There is no screaming, just flowing water. Another old song declaring itself lonely for a listener. There is no longing to wound or to own more things. The only shadow remaining is from the outspread limbs of a willow at noon. Open windows return with the warm presence of light, driving away darkness. In a room after supper, Boards whispering creaks as a chair, softly rocks, keeping time with the rhythm of breathing. Bare chested young men stroll home from plowed fields, sowed with the seeds of hope for the future, not broadcasted with corpses or irrigated with blood. The laughter of women blends with the blue lofting of birdsong, the late afternoon saturated with the perfume of poppies. Thank you. And um, if I have time for one more, I would appreciate that. And um, I'm sorry I was late, and um, if you give me a second, I apologize. Okay, here it is. This is a villanelle, okay? It's also, it's also about relationships although it's talking about nature. It's called glacial pace. The softest lands evolve at glacial pace. Rough mountains are grown slowly into hills, but tender valley flows with lights and grace. Ravines and canyons flaunt their open space. Wild rivers carve, refusing to stand still. The softest lands evolve at glacial pace. White water rapids rise and beg the chase. White summits echo challenges and thrills. But tender valleys flow with light and grace. Storms rage and etch the rock face in place. Velocity is part of nature's skill. The softest lands evolve at glacial pace. Seas surge, obliterate, and leave no trace. 
whole continents submerge beneath their will. But tender valleys flow with light and grace. Both fast and slow emerge and interface. Sometimes creation's speed is what fulfills. But tender valleys flow with light and grace. The softest lands evolve at glacial pace. Thank you. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. Wow. So beautiful as always, Robert. Thanks for joining and such an honor, you know, to be having you on this platform. Yes, please, ma'am. Please, please, please. I was just wondering if there's time for me to repeat my song since we didn't have an audience when we started out. Exactly, exactly. You should, you should. And Christopher, I missed this uh, uh, Robert. And Robert, yeah, maybe I think I should have this. Yeah. But yes. Uh, I mean, the whole lot are new here just now. Please, please. <clears throat> Yeah, this is a song I was uh, reminded of yesterday, which was Armistice Day. And I think I'll explain this. I'm sure all of you know that Armistice Day is celebrated or it's in memory of those we lost during the First World War. Now, uh, it is uh, the Remembrance Day is on the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour of the year 1918 when the nations that were engaged in war decided to put an end to it. But we all know it was just for a while. So I'm going to sing a song which reminds me of what happened then. <clears throat> Last night I had the strangest dream I never dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed there was a mighty room, the moon was full of men, and the paper they were signing said they'd never fight again. And when the paper was all signed, and a million copies made, they all joined hands and bowed their heads and grateful prayers were prayed. And the people in the streets below were dancing round and round and swords and guns and uniforms were scattered on the ground. Last night I had the strangest dream I've never dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. Yeah. That is uh, Kalyan Raman, my dear friends, once again with the oh, uh, homestays. Oh, oh, well. Please give a round of applause. That speaks volumes. Oh, this. thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we got Bizo. Bizo, if you are there, please, uh, I could see you. Yes, Isaac, go ahead. We can end up this show with you and maybe uh, my uh, boy. Isaac, please turn on your mic.
Uh, yes. Dear friend and dear Kumar, and the time is said, but uh, the muses uh, send me uh, send me a nice poem, a uh, small poem. Isaac Cohen. Love. The giving. The happiness. The throne. Thank you, Isaac Cohen. Israel. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you. Thanks for joining. I think maybe yeah, you could. Thank you. <laughs> uh, mm. Let's send yeah. this uh, reading with my poem. Maybe I could just finish this talk. Thank you. Thank Low, low, and low. The silent ambience of silky road, the somber moods of tipsy travelers. The saturation of wintry breeze, the sill of sentient cosmos. Well, what's with all the above combinations of complex units? Try to decode the sections, the mutations of permutations and the effect of consternation and the constellation of emotions. One thing I found and confounded in reaction, yes, a weft of passion runs through the vein of season that bewitched every other person. Lifeless and being in life is no reason. The divine mm -hmm. smell of affection binds all facets. The divine devotion to love binding all elements. Love, love, love. <laughs> and love. Uh, that was my piece. Hope you liked it. <laughs> oh, <maybe. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lara. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Jaya, ma'am. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Renu, Tracer. Thank you, Sarasuti, ma'am. Scott, Subedis, Ronisa, Squibs, the Swifts. Please join in next coming weeks too. Yeah, Ronnie, thank, you. Busy. Thank, you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank to you. All of you. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.